Hello YouTube and welcome to another episode of Kerbal Engineering. This is where I assemble various probes, parts and planes and space planes in KSP that I will be flying on my career mode series that is airing on Fridays typically. Today we will be taking a look and making the Duna Sciencer Com Lander Combo Probe. And to do so the mission for this craft would be to essentially go to Duna, land there, while the other part of the craft will remain in orbit and return with some sweet, sweet science, hopefully back to Kerbin. So, first part that I'm constructing would be the lander. As you can see, it's a tiny probe-based lander with some landing legs, and I hope I will have sufficient command authority to be able to land it on Duna. I'm trying to go with the less is more approach here and hopefully I mean uh, we want some we want some radial shoots we have probe core battery of course solar panels lander legs and uh, drogue shoots as well as the main shoots probably it's a very good chance that this is complete overkill for Duna but uh, I haven't been to Duna a very, very long time, so I'm thinking I'd rather take my chances, pre preferably. As you can see, I've added the Kerbal Engineer because I really need some readings and info. Without it, I'm just constructing willy-nilly, so... Okay, so a little bit landing struts, let's retract the legs, then we need to have a decoupler and then we will be constructing the second part of the Duna probe which would be Duna or you know probe orbiter and that one will be the part that will be returning hopefully back to Kerbin. So as you can see I'm not really rich in terms of um, antennas that I can use and previous you know previous attempt to get to Duna resulted in a fiasco where I didn't have enough control authority to do pretty much anything so this time around I'm a little bit smarter, hopefully, time will tell, and uh, I'm adding some more, you know, antennas, hopefully that will uh, give us enough uh, antenna range to reach Kerbin. So I want to be placing this antenna, I don't want it on the sides because it's not going to look very pretty, I would like to keep it on top so that it kind of overlaps a little bit with the parachute. So I'm just gonna put it here on top of the parachute and then I'm gonna clip it in. Doesn't need to look very beautiful, but hey, I don't care at this point. I just hope it won't impede the opening of the parachute. Also, thank you very much, guys, for your feedback in terms of length of KSP episodes. I've been try experimenting with this KSP news. Some people like the format, some people don't. But uh, the majority of you voted that you would for sure like longer episodes. So I'm going to try to oblige. And I probably won't be able to hold this news format where I have the news prepared in advance. But I will more likely be commenting back on the gameplay and stuff. But I will see amount of content versus, you know, what is shown, etc. Let me know in the comments below. Would you prefer me to have these highlights and more of things that has happened? But I know that some of you have requested, you know, a full-on playthrough where I go through things, set up maneuver nodes and stuff. And I do it a little bit accelerated fashion as I did in my old Interplanetary Voyage series. Currently, I'm leaning towards that. Alright, back to the building. As you can see, I added another probe body. I added two antennas. Because this part will not be landing on Duna. So I don't need to worry about the air drag with this one. Also, uh, I've added, uh, as you can see, some... some shoots, some experiments, and then I need to put some fuel tanks and also for its ability to get pretty much anywhere. I'm thinking Terrier here because that one should have enough oomph to just go back and maybe, you know, return back from Duna to Kerbin. 
So, and it will be flying without the top part. So I'm not overly concerned, but I'm thinking now, hmm. Spark fuel engine. Uh, maybe I should be putting these a little bit more down and these landing legs are too big these landing legs I want to be landing uh, but hold on I think I need something else I think I need another decoupler and below the decoupler I would need probably a heat shield oh, 0625 seems rather small I think it would cause excessive heat on uh, probably pretty much everything so I'm thinking of putting like a 1.25 followed by uh, another tank that would be kind of the deorbit tank and then I'm gonna be putting a decoupler and hold on this decoupler is no longer the 0625 I would take 1.25 decoupler hold on there we go then we put you yes so we have a decoupler, lander, perfect. Need to just align the, what do you call these? Um, I'm sometimes like words, you know, make sure that I could put stages in correctly. So far it, they seem rather okay. Yeah, shoots, this, okay, yes. Okay, this needs to be sorted out. They want I want the same time when I fire a decoupler, I want the engine to start. And now we add the landing legs, which we will of course fold. Perfect. Then after this, we want to be putting another decoupler. Heat shield 1.875, yes. I'm hoping this would be returning to Kerbin. I have no idea if it will. Now we have the 1.875 fuel tank. Hmm. No, 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 I need a decoupler between these two, that's for sure. There we go. And then let's put the Nerva atomic rocket motor, which we have researched lovingly in the previous episode. Hmm. Yeah, if we get a fuel shortage, then I have a risking of losing the heat shield, but hey... Let's put some uh, antenna to be able to remote control this even on ascent. Because I'm worried that these two uh, bigger uh, relay antennas might snap off or just burn up in the upper stages of the atmosphere, losing my control over the craft. Which is a possibility, I would say. Well, I'm just now exploring how it would it look if I put the 1.25 instead so let's see if the delta v would be much different that would be 1200 delta v compared to the 1900 no i'm gonna stick with 1900 i'm sorry that sounds a lot more feasible yes All right. Ooh, this looks ugly. Let's put the 1.2 decoupler at the bottom and then we will be put a sort of fairing or something. Air protective shell, come on. That, that, that. A little bit wider, yes. There we go, close it up a little, and bingo, that's it. So that's our payload. It's a rather, rather hefty payload, don't you think? So now what I'll do, I clearly need a bigger fairing. 
because now I'm putting the adaptation to 2.5. I would prefer if I could use just the 2.5 meter fairing and that would be much simpler, but hey. Okay. Okay, mainsail. 1.45. I could use some extra oomph at launch, so I'm gonna be putting that one with these two jokers, yes. I mean 1.4 is actually a quite good uh, thrust to weight, but I'm typically shooting for 1.8 roughly. Just to make things rather simple on takeoff and also fuel efficient, because if you put too little then it will be able to take off, but it will be struggling uh, so hard to you know fight the gravity that it will hardly be, you know, worth your while. Okay, so fuel tanks, great. Uh, set up the fuel flow. These two, these rockets will fire some... Okay, now we are at 267. Well, that's very respectable. Kind of reminds me a little bit of the Falcon Heavy, but not really. The Fal original Falcon Heavy is much more sleek and has better di different design. But still, I like the idea of it. I don't like, you know, this crazy asparagus staging, 20 stages. I, I like my rockets to be sleek and, you know, aerodynamically feasible. There we go. All right, I think uh, we add these decouplers and we will be calling this for this design episode. Be sure to check out uh, the KSP news or the Let's Play series to see how that will fare. Once again, guys, I have been Groundforks. Thank you very much for watching. Like if you like, leave a comment. What would you like me to design? And I will be seeing you all in the next episode of Kerbal Engineering and Let's Play series. Thank you very much for watching. This is Groundforks. Signing off.